beans, avocados, and my favorite, dark chocolate. Don't forget those Epsom salt baths and be smart about supplementation. This has been the One Life Radio Fueling Champions Minute. Hi, I'm Eli Roth for PETA. While violence in the movies is make-believe, sadly, violence against animals is all too real. Countless animals are tortured and abused every day, and most of the time these crimes go unreported. If you know of someone who is abusing an animal, please tell the police or tell an adult. People who get away with hurting animals often turn their violence against people, and that's a cycle we need to break. So let's leave the violence where it belongs, on the screen. Do you know this, Sean? I've never heard this, <laughs> but it's great. I didn't. I didn't either. I'm being completely. I didn't know who it was. But it's a Grateful Dead. She said, "I'm wow. going to play so and so." What's the name of the song? Uh, Sugar Magnolia. Sugar Magnolia by the Grateful Dead. I, you know, she's a deadhead. That's awesome because <laughs> I really don't. I don't know much Grateful Dead because they're never on the radio, and that's something that they take pride in, right? Yeah. Except for Touch of Grey, which any deadhead, like, they kind of hate that song. So Yeah. Um, that's the only song I really know well. I know Casey Jones, like a couple other songs, but, um, yeah, I didn't know that one. Yeah, me either. So we're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to One Life Radio. This is Bernadette. I've got Diamond uh, Gray in the studio running the controls and the music with uh, Sean Wells in studio, Lexi and Avi, and we've got uh, Shelly Wells mic'd up as well. We're going to talk a little bit about holiday baking and what she does in her keto kitchen uh, because uh, Sean's uh, on the ketogenic diet and has been for many years, and you are a keto expert along with a lot of other people on the show. Uh, Dom Diagostino was on last week while you were uh, out of town. It was great to have him on the show. Dom fan. He's the he's, he's a, one of the kindest. He's the uh, nicest sweetest guy. People. He is. I mean, you know. So I, I don't know if you've met him. No. Uh, he is. And not only is he a PhD, incredibly accomplished. He's done his TED talk, and he's works with the uh, the military, like actually working with Navy SEALs. Yeah, NASA. No, no, no. NASA. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, exactly. NASA. Uh, working with cancer patients, right. all this stuff, spinning out all these brilliant people uh, out of his lab, like Dr. Angela Poff. Just an incredible guy, and he's so humble. and oh, here's the he's thing so too. Humble. He like uh, deadlifts like 600 pounds. Oh wow! He's he's like a no power lifter. What? He's incredible, like yeah. super strong. But like you talk to him, and he's like, "Hey, how are you doing?" I, I just know. Wanted to... <laughs> I mean, he's it's the nicest, most humblest person. He is, and he's been on like. Tim Ferriss, Joe yep. Rogan, like all these. I mean, he's just he's, he's very a rock refreshing. Star, he, I know, but right? he's just he's super humble, right? And it, so it. knowing that he's a rock star, whenever I know he's going to be on the air with me, I always get like a little nervous. Just I think it's just natural because he's so profound on but so many levels. But he's so chill. He's <laughs> but he's so, so chill. chill. And the minute I hear his voice, it's like it takes it, calms oh. it down because he's, like, he's hey, just he's like so Mr. Sweet. Rogers. He is like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> he's awesome. I, we'll have to send him this so it'll you know make him feel good. He's such a great guy. Yeah. Um, but and so are you. And I love what we're talking about today. We're talking about uh, these dual studies that question the impact of artificial sweet on gut bacteria. So so there were two study, studies. Let's talk about the first one and its importance uh, to us and why it made headlines. Yeah, so the first study was actually out of Israel and Singapore, and it looked at what's cool here. They looked at six uh, popular artificial sweeteners. Um, not all of them are here, really, in, in our culture. Uh, some of them really? are international ones. Yeah, and they're not all here. But aspartame, sucralose, saccharin, neotame, Adventame, which is not here, and then ACE K, sulfame potassium is the other name for it. But yeah, those are most of those are here. Well, and there's one. What is the name of that one that we had? Oh my goodness, he was in the New York Times. Trail how? Tra- 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 Trailos. Trailos. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that you don't even you don't even uh, get to you don't even get full disclosure on the uh, whether or not they're using it, if I'm not mistaken, and that affects your gut bacteria as well. That one's because unique. it's only it's, sold commercially right now, right? Yeah, triolose is a modified version of glucose um, chemically. It's called an invert sugar. Like t- it basically tastes like sugar, but you're not processing it the same. But it right. does have calories, so it's not. It doesn't right. fall into this non-caloric 
artificial sweetener category. Well, we had him on the show. What is the name of Moises Velasquez Manoff? Yes, and he wrote an article for the New York Times. He wrote the book An Epidemic of Absence, A New Way of Understanding Allergies and Autoimmune Diseases. Yeah, really and, and so he wrote an, an article for the New York Times about um, about that ingredient. Tr- tel- tel- what is Trilos. it? Trilos. And, um, yeah, it's and called it was- The Bad Germs in Your Diet Soda. Yeah, but it was interesting. You should everyone out there should should look it up and read it. I I still have it in my at my house on my desk. It's it was a fascinating article. Um, but but to continue what we were talking about, so these yeah. ones that are on the market here, how toxic are they? Well, yeah. So well, in this study, you know, some people criticize these studies where it's like the quote unquote test tube study in vitro study. And what's kind of cool, though, is they had this uh, bacteria that they use. It's called it has bioluminescent technology, which means bio means, you know, life luminescent like light. Mm -hmm. So these things actually like are engineered to light up when they become toxic. And it's an E. coli strain of bacteria. And they literally brighten when they when they have toxicity. And so they measured the degree of brightness of these things when exposed to these various uh, sweeteners. And they found that they all uh, basically are, quote unquote, toxic. But mm-hmm. again, it's hard to say like this is an in vitro thing. So what's cool is this is directional. There is another study that I want to cover in here that is with humans. Okay. And and they looked at, I think it's 29 healthy young adults, which is really cool that uh, they're non-diabetic too. And they gave them an artificial sweetener blend, and this is pretty common to get sucralose and ACE-K. And they gave it to them in a capsule. And basically, it was in the dose of what would be about one and a half liters of diet soda a day. Maybe that's more than most people would have in terms of diet soda, but I think it's fairly common to get that much artificial sweeteners through all the things that you eat mm-hmm. in a day. Wow. So I think this one, you know, because people in the past have criticized a lot of these studies of like, okay, what do we do with this test tube thing? Okay, that was in mice. Okay, like that was a dose that's like 10 times, 100 times what I might consume. This one is in healthy humans. This one is in uh, artificial sweeteners that we use commonly. And it's a degree of exposure that's, I feel like, fairly normal. So... I think the results here are kind of interesting and very applicable mm-hmm. and less less easy to criticize like things have been in the past. So I think that's why like people are still unsure, like, okay, what do we do with this? Mm-hmm. I hear that they're, they may affect gut bacteria. I hear that they may not be healthy. I'm not sure what the application is when it's rats, when it's test tubes, when it's 100 times the dose I would have. So this one I think is very applicable. And they found that, the, there was a significant decrease in the abundance of bacterium associated with positive gut health. So it's, you know, taking away probio- probiosis where you have more good bacteria than bad bacteria. And there was an increase in 11 opportunistic gut pathogens. So this wow. means that you get into a state of dysbiosis and these gut pathogens normally are not present in healthy individuals. So basically, so like dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is when you have the uh, a ratio, a greater ratio of bad bacteria okay. to the good bacteria. Mm-hmm. Probiosis is the opposite. Right, right. And so we want to be in a state of probiosis in our gut. Uh, and obviously, this isn't this isn't good. But we don't know how long you know how transient that is. Like, how long does this change in gut bacteria take place? But the fact is, we are seeing changes, and it's changes for the worse. We're seeing things that can immunocompromise you. Mm-hmm. Now, think if you're elderly. Now, it might be – here's a case where it's different. Like maybe with me, not as big a deal. But let's say I'm 80. I'm in a nursing home. I have a urinary tract infection. I have a diet soda. Might be a very big impact. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, that's you know that's the kind of stuff that we need more research on. Because the exposure to these things, like it or not, it's not going away, and they're everywhere. Okay, so you would talk about diet soda. I cannot wait to talk about aspartame. Uh, we, we teased it before the break. Uh, I think it, it should have never been passed by the FDA. How do you feel about it? I, I hate aspartame. I get headaches from it. I think there's a lot of people that, look, we've talked about, um, just like when you have, we've talked about nootropics, right? Like there's mm-hmm. different nootropics, be it supplements or drugs. Everyone's brain chemistry is different. And 
neuro uh, neurologically we have different neurotransmitters, right? Different levels of them, sensitivities to them. And aspartame contains phenylalanine, which is a neurotransmitter. And this is the reason why some people get horrible headaches or brain fog Mm -hmm. when they have this sweetener. It's very different from just saying like, hey, like this thing might be affecting your gut bacteria. You know, this is, I'm saying like, this really is not good neurologically for you. It can cause like excitatory differences for some for some uh individuals maybe that have ADD it may trigger you know some kind of tantrum it may right. trigger like a you know well, some kind it, of break isn't it also related like the phenylalanine to the PKU uh in children yes. yeah if yeah yeah if, if you have uh difficulty breaking down that that amino acid processing can cause like mild acid. retardation and stuff mm-hmm. right yeah yeah i mean that's some serious stuff and it's out there floating around in gum you know that we give to children uh, and people start giving their kids gum at like two years old, a lot of people do. And I just think it's very irresponsible for that, uh, particularly aspartame, to be in anything that a child could potentially consume. And that includes diet soda, too, because it's a trickle down from the top. If mom and dad are eating diet soda, guess what? Little baby Johnny's going to take a little sip out of that can, too, you know, at a picnic or wherever or in their own home. And I just, it's just, it's, I, it's just, it's, to me, it's like so wrong. What are some other be- uh, uh, side effects? of aspartame that we were talking about right before we went to break. You said brain fog and a lot of other things. Yeah, exactly. But here's the other thing. With this study, and I think these artificial sweeteners, this one actually points us out, and this may be the case too with aspartame, is that there was um, changes in how our bodies responded to glucose. So again, this goes back to your, your... tricking the body with these super high intensity artificial sweeteners right. that just don't exist in nature. Right. It's it's totally synthesized, super potent, and you're tricking the body into thinking when it, as soon as it tastes it on the tongue, I think things are going into into motion in your body. Certain right. enzymes are oh getting upregulated. Your insulin's going I was just going to so I, you know the question happening. I'm going to ask, right? You know where I'm going. You ready to catch the ball? I'm throwing I it am. at you. Okay. After the break? <laughs> no, right now. And then okay. you can answer it. I want to know if you believe, uh, as a scientist, there's a connection between artificial sweeteners and the rise in diabetes. We're going to answer it right after the break. Stay tuned, everyone. You're listening to One Life Radio. I want to wake up where you are. I won't say anything at all. So why don't you Hey, this is Sean Wells of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. One Life Radio is proud to partner with the ISSN. The ISSN is the world's leading scientific organization dedicated to the science of supplements and sports nutrition. For their latest conferences and events, go to theissn.org. That's theissn.org. Hi, everyone. This is Bernadette. Do you know why I love Paleo Magazine? Paleo Magazine was founded with the purpose of providing readers with the information they need to live strong, vibrant, healthy lives. They are dedicated to partnering with leaders in the paleo community to spread the knowledge of ancestral health principles without the influence of big pharma or big agriculture. Paleo Magazine. Follow them on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, or visit them at paleomagonline.com. That's paleomagonline.com. Here's the dill pickle. Squatty Potty Works. It's awesome. Find yours at your local Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon, or squattypotty.com. That's squattypotty.com. Sun Warrior believes that plants provide the cleanest and most powerful foods, rich in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and phytonutrients. Our bodies crave real foods, especially in this age where we heavily process everything we eat, stripping out all of the benefits and nutrition well before we have a chance to even use them. Illuminate your body, mind, and the planet with Sun Warrior. To learn more, visit them at sunwarrior.com. That's sunwarrior.com. Did you know a mother rat will dip her paws into cool water and gently smooth the fur around her infant's faces? The babies put their arms around their mother's neck and pay attention while being bathed. Rats and mice fall in love, risk their lives to save their kids, 
and giggle when tickled. Evan Walker writes of a mouse who died of shock in a trap. His life was a life fully as real to him as ours is to us.